Uh, so let's start our session. And the title is How to Hold Upstream Training in Japan and Get New Contributors. Here, title has triple exclamation marks, okay? At first, uh, introduce ourselves. So I'm Akihito Ino from Japan. I joined the Kubernetes community at the end of 2018 and keep on contributing to around the C cluster lifecycle and C contributor experience also. And this dog icon is used on my GitHub oh, as me, okay? And Kai-san. And I'm Shizi from also from NEC Japan, currently working on the Japanese translation or for dashboard and website. And although I've just joined the community for only one year, but I really learned a lot and felt a lot during this whole process from our community members. And also a big thanks for my boss, Moto-san, and also Imo-san, and also other upstream training members. Thank you. And I introduced further the Kubernetes upstream training. It also called new contributor workshop on the Kubernetes upstream community. In this training, the trainee runs two topics. And the first, further is the Kubernetes community. Uh, further is the SIG special interest group. Further is the approver, reviewer. Further is the owner's file, something like that. And second, how to start contribute to that. PR workflow on GitHub, what labels you can use, where is the con codes at, something like that. And next, trainees exercise hands-on about pull request creation to merging on sandbox repository in Kubernetes community. We explained these topics in Japanese. We held this training at public event in Japan eight times in almost three years. That's why my session title has triple exclamation marks. So I will have quadruple exclamation mark if I go the next Kubernetes session in next year. This is the event, event list. We held the training. You can notice about the training went on online from 2020. I think many people, many, many people know the reason why. But please wait. I'll show you about the details in latter half of this session. All of these events held on Japan and mainly focused on cloud native fields. So trainees is highly motivated to contribute to Kubernetes community, I think. We share our experiences about the training to upstream community two times. First on 2019 and next on 2022. Yes, that was almost one month, one month ago. Kaisen, co-presenter in this session, presented on Kubernetes Contributor Summit to 2022 Detroit. And today, there are many Kubernetes forks in this Kubernetes also. So please feedback about these sessions on any channels, uh, Twitter, Slacks, uh, of course, face-to-face. -face. Okay, introduction is over. We go main content. I take button to Kai-san, please. Thank you. So now I'm going to talk about why we run the Kubernetes upstream training in Japan. So here we have, to, we have to mention the reasons that prevent people from joining our community. First is the language barrier. Compared with people in Europe and United States, people in Eastern countries are actually not used to speak English. However, it seems like everyone in the community communicates in English, and mastering English seems like the only way to better integrate into the team. And second is the cultural barrier. In community, everyone is expected to speak up actively, brainstorm together and draw conclusions through this whole communication process. However, Japanese people turn to think a lot before they speak and therefore may miss the opportunity to state their opinion. 
and this leads them to think more. It's kind of a vicious cycle that will cause them to be more and more afraid to speak up. And that's why we hold this training. We want to encourage more and more people to get involved into our community. For those who are interested but don't know where to start, our trainings offer an opportunity to walk them through the whole process of making contributions. And at the end of the day, most of them will go home with their very first pull request. And we also want to make friends and solve problems related to Kubernetes in Japan in the language we are used to. And the most important part is we want to deliver the following message is that even if you are not fluent in English, you can say anything. If everyone in community is very kind, so don't be afraid to start. And next is about how to hold this training. You might sound familiar since you probably already doing something similar every day. So there are five steps to go. First, you communicate with SIG contributor experience folks on Slack in advance. Next, compare, uh, prepare the practice environment where people can make contributions during the training without affect other Kubernetes projects. And we always do this by creating a directory for our training or an area in Kubernetes 6 slash contributor playground repository with a pull request. Then there are some works about organizing trainers. Trainers should be one of the Kubernetes SIG organization members so that we can review and merge trainees pull request. So we have to add trainers into the owner's file under our training directory. And after that, we prepare our training text and share it with uh, the trainees in advance. We have some improvements and updates in our contents right now, and we are going to share it in the latter slides. At last, inform trainees about the homework. The trainees also have some homeworks to do. For example, they need to create a GitHub account and install Git in their laptop, try to get used to it if they have the time, and clone the playground repository I just mentioned, and join the official Kubernetes Slack. Thank you, Kaisan. And here, I would like to share the improvements in Japanese training. There are some accesses, as that's about time, content, organizer training, and others. The first is a topic about to time. There are a lot of things we want to share, but the, the truth is we don't have much of time. In our case, the training is half a day, about four or five hours. So we have to make some cutbacks. For example, we can take hands-on session for Kubernetes slash Kubernetes modification, building, and testing process. But those are very time consuming. For such contents, we have to give up the hands-on session and only introduce it briefly. The pra practical session we can offer now is to create pull request in contributor playground repository. That's the sandbox repository in the Kubernetes community. On our first two trainings in 2019, the training was held within the main event, but some people were unable to participate in our training because there was a lot of overlap with other sessions. So we changed the training to collocated event. Next topic about content. Prepare training text in our language and share it with trainees in advance. In our case, since we basically speak Japanese at our event, Kubernetes upstream training Or, Kubernetes には仕事というものがあります Or, Kubernetes の community の価値には inclusive is better than exclusive というものがあります Like that. But, 
in order to help the trainee integrate better into Kubernetes community in the future, we also have some tips for English communication. And the first one is uh, frequent phrases. I am facing the same issue. And did, did, uh, needs, and uh, what do you think, and uh, shrug. And the second is emoji. Uh, this is great for non-native English speakers, I think, because uh, we need to have a few time for creating English phrases, even if there is uh, small things. We can express our emotion, uh, for example, plus one, okay, congratulations, just one click, thanks to great emoji culture. Also, there were requests that they would like to know uh, the actual state of development. So we added introduction to the development environment of Kube Spray, website, and dashboard, which is actively area of the trainers. We especially think that documentation and the translations are a good place to start contributing. So we emphasize that in our training. Actually, we know some trainee who contribute to Translate. It's very appreciated. Next, CRA, a contributor license agreement. The CRA sign was a pitfall in our trainings because it is a two complex steps. But after easy CRA introduced, trainees become to sign CRA on easy way. That's truly easy. Literally, we, up, we updated that document for the trainees to use EDCRA sign process. Thanks for the Kubernetes community folks, especially a C contributor experience who introduced EDCRA this year. Trainee may not be ready for their corporate CRA right away. They need to coordinate with their company. So, we introduce them individual CRA at first. I would like to introduce the improvements about the communi communication channel. First, we prepare Slack channel and use them in our training. A JP Dev, a JP Dev channel is for asking technical helps and or review request and JP mentoring is for asking help about community activities. <laughs> to motivate trainees, we ask trainees to express their enthusiasm in advance on Slack channel. It will be first step to join Kubernetes community. We took photos and made it public so that they are aware that they became a member of the community. And for about a week after the training, our follow-up is carried out until the trainee's pull request is merged. Also, we made video and published to YouTube, then create, created ad hoc directory, so the trainee can take training on demand style. And more we tackle to the COVID-19 situation. Back in 2020, the situation is so bad that people can leave their homes. So we have no choice but to hold our events online. Actually, to be honest, we were worried, ab worried at first because we don't have any experiences as an online trainer. However, we have to do it all right. So we've been pra practicing the ingenuity and improvement that we can think of. At that time, we could only prepare a Zoom meeting, so we use it. As of now, we know uh, that we have a few options to connect with our audience in Zoom. That is meeting, webinar, and a breakout room. With a webinar, when attendees want to share their screen with us, 
we have we have to take a few extra steps, like raising hand and promoting to the panelist. It, it can take a file before the trainee share it. Also, breakout rooms require a few extra steps to share with all of the attendees. We've, we found that closer inter interaction is possible in the meeting style than in the webinar and the breakout room. Currently, various functions have been added to Zoom, but we don't, do not want to raise the barriers to the trainees. So we continue to use only the basic meeting functions. The key here is to create an atmosphere where everyone can talk and chat. And we make all tra training resources available for the trainees' preparation. This allows trainees to refer to the material from our previous event and also to review the context anytime they want after the event. As trainers, our workload is also reduced because of it. Here are some pros and cons. And the pros first, no travel expenses. The first pros is that there are no travel expenses. It means that the barriers to participate is lowered. People with limited travel budget, like students, can participate. And next, location and the situation free. Also, trainees can participate in their own lo location and the situation. There is a trainee who doesn't have a quiet rule so participate from his car. Even people who are raising ch children could participate. Next, physical and time-wise friendly. People who are not strong in physical can participate. These are very helpful in expand our community. Also, these are same for trainers. The the above advantages are also applied to us. No need to prepare the venue. The event leader does not need to arrange the venue for this online training. Share everything with each other instantly. Many useful online tools help sharing everything with everyone, each other instantly more pr pr practical for contributor. And we found that online training is more practical for contributor. We are contribute to Kubernetes community by online communication. The online training is same manner. These items are pros, but sometimes we want to meet people in person communicate with them in the real resolution, and feel them warm. I think this is just one cons. Next, stats and practical tips. A maximum of 40 trainers, trainees were allowed. Many trainees came to the online training than in person. The trainers were getting busy handling a lot of pre-requests in the training. However, during, during that time, the trainees tried to various pro, pro commands, commented on other trainers' pre, trainees' pre-requests, and had various experiences. Also, we could see interaction between trainees. The percentage of pre-requests merged was significantly higher online as an in-person. The trainees who participate online and created event, they have clearly positive in intention. That's the reason of these results, I think. And here is practical tips. Motivate, encourage, and support trainees in the local language. 
online training is more practical for contribution. Share resources in the open source model. Use actual events. Use actual environments. Everything on GitHub. And lastly, future plans. Let me introduce our future plans. As you can see on the screen, uh, Okinawa Open Days uh, 2022 will be held in a hybrid environment, which is new challenge for us. We would like to share how the training in hybrid going, goes on and improvements if we get a chance. And in order to make our training more and more helpful, we are also constantly looking for new ideas. For example, our training slides are outdated, so we should keep up with the content on kubernetes.dev. One of the problems we are facing right now is uh, our trainers all come from the same company. I'll be appreciated and welcome if Kubernetes project contributors from other organizations can join us as trainers. We are also planning to list up some beginners friendly projects or issues for our trainees. So they won't struggle so much with how to get started and will be more likely to keep contributing. And we are constantly looking for new ideas to improve our training. Finally, I would like to say big thanks. Thanks for the contributor experiences, folks, and we have to contact on Slack in advance. Thanks so much for the, the assistance. We are able to hold the training successfully in the previous years under their kindly help. And also big thanks to you to the event organizers who invited us. That's all from us. Thanks. Arigatouzaimashita. Patch. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your great jobs and presentation. And I have two questions. Uh, one, uh, what is your body or purpose uh, of uh, holding upstream training for your business and how many trainers uh, contrib uh, continue to contribute? Please. Thank you. Uh, you have two questions, I, I think. And the uh, first one, uh, what is the business value of our companies? Uh, yeah, our company uses a lot of OSS in production products. So we need to make uh, OSS community uh, have more diversity and or more sustainability. Mm -hmm. That's why I holding uh, we holding training in uh, Japan, I think. And the second one is. Uh, And second is many, how many trainees can continue to contribute, right? So actually, we have the data, but we actually uh, haven't counted them. It's not like we forget to do that. We actually do that on purpose. It's because that we think, uh, since contributors always do make contributions at their spire time, so we it's all up to them. So we can't force them to do any contributions. But yeah, and I think it's, uh, it's, it will take a long time. It's, about, uh, it's all about the mind changing to make more and more people to get interested in our Kubernetes projects. So it should take a long time and we are actually currently working on it. And yeah like the purpose I just mentioned at the former slides. 
at this moment, our purpose is that if there are anyone that want to get involved into the community, we are always here to help. I hope that answered your question. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. <laughs> as a one node maintainer, uh, I'm very <laughs> encouraged. Thank you. Thank you for the question. And any other questions? Any other questions? Thank you for your, your presentation. Uh, uh, I'm a currently kind of SRE position. Um, I'm not sure that the how contribute that uh, those core technology of the, the Kubernetes. So from the user side, do, do you have any seg uh, have uh, those kind of the user side uh, activity to contribute to the core side? Can you understand my question? I just want to confirm that uh, is that is that means that is there any contributors in our community working on sort of uh, core function? Is that from user perspective? Sorry, <laughs> it is a very question. difficult question. Maybe thank you for the question. User side, so <laughs> it's it, uh, I think it, it's not the, the direct uh, answer, but uh, we we have uh, our uh, text in our, our trainings, and uh, we introduce uh, very very many six uh, say cluster cycle say application say and deployment or something like that, and uh, we we explain our uh, explain that ro role. <laughs> role of uh, each six, and uh, I, I explain the trainees. Uh, so, uh, just choice and fit in your business uh, work, and uh, uh, that, uh, because uh, this is not a to ask because the trainees, uh, trainees uh, what. Uh, should uh, should should choose the best uh, area of Kubernetes. So, uh, <laughs> maybe um, close to discussion about that. Uh, um, what is the best position for uh, your uh, trainees? Yes. Try to discuss yes after the, this uh, this conference. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that, that is enough. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. So one more question. <laughs> Uh, uh, I think it's uh, your activity is very nice, and uh, to to increase uh, developer in mm. Japan. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, the number of cloud native application uh, user application user in Japan is still low. Mm. Uh, this is obvious in Gartner's statistic. Mm -hmm. uh, could could you tell uh, what we should do to increase the business user of uh, cloud native applications? Do you have any ideas? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's a big big issue. I think I think, <laughs> too. and uh, but. Uh, in my opinion, uh, cloud native uh, engineer uh, should have contributed to the OSS, and uh, because uh, OSS user uh, use the cloud native technology uh, and 
så, 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 så. En, uh, no, no, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, oh. Sorry, uh, talk, talk, talk after this session, okay? Okay, <laughs> sorry. Let's <laughs> discuss later. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.